Uh, we like, we want that, we want that. We cannot understand you, we don't like you. If you ha are there, please give us of this world something that is sufficient for us. We don't want you. That is our fate which we have made. Unlucky, unlucky and unlucky. So my dear, we are to belong to some high one, glorious one, wonderful one, so that we may become the same as he is. But this world is, and bodies are there, and everything of this world is there, lifeless. It will also kill us. And we will suffer in this valley of death. We remain dead, and we will always be under the control of the evil, only to suffer and suffer. Don't we understand? Have we no feeling like that? Have we no understanding like that? As I feel death, no. As I feel even um, in you, uh, this is not there what I like, what I feel that it should be in you. And that uh, I am trying, I am trying, I am trying my level best. And I would go on trying, I would go on trying. It is my duty to for the sun to go on giving light, go on giving light, go on giving light. At some time, some person may open the eye and may see the light and will be not led by darkness into darkness and will be led to darkness and will live the light of light. So that light will shine in you, Master, make you open to you. And that light is there which is you, which is in you. And you take taken out of the darkness and you have to connect it with the, that eternal light, which is to uh, envelop you, enclose you, and you have to merge in it, and then enjoy forever, for eternity. Belong to him, live in him, he is your life, he is your light, he is your all knowledge, all with everything is there in him. If we are having anything else than him, that will kill us, that will rob us, that will really destroy us. Take it for granted. This is reality, my dear. So it is only He, love thy Father God with all thy soul, with all thy heart, with all thy mind, total, 100%. And only we will be able to live. These are the basic teachings of the Masters, as I have found from my Master. All the details I cannot give you for now. Now this is the time that this great glorious sun, then after giving light for about 26 years in this world and suffering over here, God came in this world and suffered here for us, but we did not evaluate him. And he, after doing his duty properly, Really, diligently, totally, devotedly, with all ways and means, he has, we are telling that I have employed all the ways and means that you may understand, but I uh, have failed. This was his also last uh, expression of his heart, that I had done my best, I have it myself with my ears, that, but you did not accept and I am feeling myself a failure and I am not going happy that I have really done something in this world but I wanted it could not be accomplished but now I am going and I will continue in some other body that master power never and it's a mission it has its mission continuous 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 till it is accomplished if it will not stop its efforts in one body, second body, third body, fourth body, it will go on working. But we are have to see that in the body in which we have found this truth, we should clutch to that truth. Because when one master leaves one body, there is great uh, darkness, confusion. And very few, very few souls who had been following the true master truth in the previous times of the previous master, 
come to the real master of the pen times. Very few. Otherwise, 99 percent are deluded by negative power. And that was the cry of the great master that I had to leave the body. But before I leave the body, you go out of the control of the negative power and that the truth is there always appearing before you and where I am you will be to find. I will change my coat, I will change my body, but I am the same and when you will come in contact with my real self, not connected with my body only, then you will find where I am, in which body, in which garment I am. So this is your a great responsibility that what the master wants to give you, you have to keep your pot really clean and that it is holding the substance. If the master puts some elixir in it and it is leaking, it will go away. It will remain in the pot. It will go to the ground, go, go waste. This is the way that master has given us a continuous great stream of elixir, man of life, bread of life, water of life, but our part of the mind is upside down. And all what falls on it goes down on the navel places and burnt up in the fires of the navel places and we are only left with nothing useful, only suit only darkness. This is we are how making ourselves unlucky. God had made us all lucky and Master has connected us to this luck and we are still not accepting it and that is our really created uh, unfortunately. Come out of it my dear and have it. Now please close your eyes all of you. This time that Martin left the body. He was in the hospital and at about 6.15 or little more time like that, between 6.15 and 6.30, he left the body. So now try to see him where he has gone. He is not in the body, but he is out of the body and that try to see him where he is and when you will ask him, demand from him something, he will give you also. Okay, my dear, close your eyes and you know very well we have to concentrate and you go on with the meditation and after about 15 minutes or something like that, I will call you out. Go on till I call you out. Let us little uh, Sing a little poetry in remembrance of the martyr. If you can sing after me, it is very simple. You can follow. You can try following me. Oh my martyr, come to me. Oh my martyr, come. I will speak two times. You may also speak two times. Following me. Oh my martyr, come to me. Oh my martyr, come to me. Oh my master, come to me. Oh my master, come to me. My heart is yearning for ye. Come to me, come to me. My heart is yearning for ye. Come to me, come to me. My heart is yearning for ye. Come to me, come to me. Oh, my martyr, come to me. Oh, my martyr, come to me. You are the only hope for me. You are the only hope for me. You 
कम टू मी कम टू मी कम टू मी कम टू मी यू आर दी आल्फा यू आर दी ओमेगा यू आर दी आल्फा यू आर दी ओमेगा You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. In between all, only ye come to me. Come to me. In between all, only ye. Come to me, come to me. Oh, my martyr, come to me. Oh, my martyr, come to me. Or I will die without ye. Come to me, come to me. Oh my martyr, come to me. Oh my martyr, come to me. These are simple words of poetry, but also a simple way of uh, singing or illustration. This can go into your heart, and your heart should speak. Our words should be all cooperating with our heart. Then everything will be working. So, my dear, there is very much to say, very much to say, very much to say, but this tongue is so a little weak. And our expression power is also nothing. It's only that we will be able to say something about sun if we become sun ourselves. Only then we will be able to say something about sun. If and somebody has not seen the sun, how you can illustrate what sun looks like? You will have to become sun, and then other one will be able to understand this. Uh, Spirituality, God, and matter—they are not subject of our very much limited mind, body, and intellect, and anything of this world. It only subject our soul become, and then you will know. Uh, you can also show yourself to the people what is God and what is matter, and that will be appearing in you. It's kind of embarrassing, in a way to be here in front of you, being an initiate for 31 years, and look at the progress. <laughs> but I can say honestly that people ask me all the time, what was it like being with Sankar Paul Singh? And I did have the really, I was really fortunate in 1972 to spend several months traveling with him while he was on tour. And I don't know what to answer when people ask me this. Do they want me to give a, uh, an explanation as to his personality, what he was like as a man? Because I really didn't see him that way. I never got really close to him, although I did have several opportunities to be with him on a one-to-one -one basis. I can only say that he was a kind of man that I wanted to become. I never had met a human being before in my life that had such an impression on my life that I emulated and respected so much. And I can honestly say, if you ask me today, what was Sant Kripal Singh like? I would have to say, he's like him. And that's all I have to say, thank you.
Sometimes people think that they can become a master and they don't realize that that thing that thinks they can become a master is that very thing that dies. That Sankar Paul Singh Ji used to say that the humble man is the dead man, he is no longer there. And there is one glimpse that we have into this process of trans, uh, this transformational process uh, that he wrote in his own hand, which is very, something very rare and special. Because at that time that, uh, that someone goes into that, uh, that state of union with God and says like St. Paul, it is I, yet not now I, but Christ that lives in me. There's a complete disintegration, a dissolution of the personality, of the ego, and that aspect of ourselves that wanted to be something, that thought they could be something, that is gone. And so those people, the masters say, and I'm speaking now, not from first-hand experience, is that, um, that those who start knowing that they are nothing, they are possibles. But those who think they can be something, they are nothing. They can never be anything. So in this respect, um, when, the Sant, when Sant Kirpal Singh Ji Maharaj was in Lahore, he was working at the post office and he had been transferred there. And at that time, he was um, keeping his record books, his accounting books, and it came over him that he began to weep continuously, weep continuously. And he was going through this process in which that personality was dissolving into his love for his master, into, a, into that God self. And it was uncontrollable. And he, he wrote of the anguish that he felt at that time, my God, what is happening to me? And this, this somehow, when we can uh, come to appreciate this aspect of what is true humility in the master, this is the rarest gem that we have uh, that in a, in a living human being that we can find. And Lucille Gunn told me this story that the master used to send her because she would come for long sabbaticals. She was a teacher on long sabbaticals and uh, in the very hot season he would send her uh, to fulfill certain obligations she had for her educational work. And at that time, he, she was sent up to that area of Lahore and there was some satsang brother who was giving her a tour there and he showed her all around and then he said to her, and before we go, you must see the post office in Lahore. And so she said, okay, and they drove to the post office and they parked there and then he stopped and he just began weeping and weeping and weeping. And after that, he drove away. And the next day it was time for Lucille to go and then she said, so what was the big deal with the post office? <laughs> And he said, he explained to her the story of Sant Kirpal Singh and his books and his weeping at that time when he was making that transition into the godly state and uh, out of the state of ego and personality. And this happened across the street in an office building from the post office. And then he told her, my dear, the only reality is the spiritual tie. And I'll never forget this, because this is the, one of the most profound and simple statements that we are all connected together at that level. Paul Singh was not only a great scholar, but he was a great poet and a great uh, one who could express in words uh, so, prof so profound things in a way that moved the heart. And I could see all the things that I had studied for many years um, all were embodied just in, that, in, that, in those writings. And I was completely in awe of it. And I began going to the local satsang, and I wanted to get initiated, but at that time they were very, um, uh, kept us very close. And uh, after I had gone to satsang for some months, um, and they were still not saying anything to me about could I get initiated or not, finally I started asking them, wouldn't it be possible that I could also be initiated? And they said, no, not the person like you. <laughs> and they said, <clears throat> you know, you, 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 have to, you have to give up drugs and alcohol, you have to become a vegetarian and also a celibate. And um, so I said, but that's all right, whatever it takes, I'm willing to, to do my best. So they said, all right, then they gave me the address of Sant Kirpal Singh. They said, you can write to him. 
So I wrote to him. They had been initiated on tour, so they didn't know the whole procedure of waiting six months and, and filling out the application, which was the case in those days. And Sankar Pal Singh wrote back one of the four letters I have from him. And he said, in, and, and these words went right into my heart, the very first sentence of the letter, my dear, in your long search for truth, you have been guided here, and I can tell you, you have come to the right place. <laughs> and he gave me some instructions that I was to, um, about ethical lifestyle, and when I was ready, that I should contact his re representative, who was in Cincinnati, and they would uh, uh, give me the proper um, instruction. And I took this like a permission. I didn't understand that what he meant was that I would then get the application form and apply through, because it was only through the direct approval of the master at that time that one could become um, uh, initiated. It wasn't just about the technique. And this was, I was to learn in um, a very interesting way, because I went ahead right away when I got the letter, and I called the re a representative whose name was Carol Koth in Cincinnati, and I told her, I have a letter from the master giving me permission to be initiated. Please let us set up an appointment as soon as possible. They put me in a little hallway, little waiting room outside, and it was about midnight. And I was there in that waiting room in this house that I'd never been to before, and I started feeling a little strange, a little lonely. And I looked up on the wall, and there was a picture of Sant Kirpal Singh Ji. And as I looked at that picture, suddenly it became three-dimensional, and the master himself his, his head came out of the picture and in a three-dimensional form and uh, his eyes were filled with the most beautiful rose-colored light and that light came out of his eyes and came into me and blessed me and said, I love you, I'm with you. So I went and I took the initiation, but I had no experience because I had not been approved. And, <laughs> and the, Carol was quite concerned about this and uh, didn't know what to say, and so she said, please let me see your paperwork, <laughs> so that she could see everything was in order, and I said, what paperwork? And it came out then that what had happened, and she told me, well, I'll have to contact the master in India by phone, which was not so easy in those days, and it will take some time, so please go home and continue with the practices as best as possible, which I did. And after a few days, I began to have a, an inner awakening, an inner opening. I was sitting in meditation, and the things began to come, and then also the phone began to ring. And in those days, the phone was were hardwired in. You couldn't unplug them, and the low, low was very loud. And after it rang 15 or 20 times, I got up and answered it, quite annoyed. And it was Carol, and she said, I've just gotten off the phone with the master, and your application is approved. So this was a very proof positive of the power of the master that uh, it was his attention that that one who is one with all consciousness can affect consciousness anywhere and can bless us at any distance. The arm of the master is very long. So I was delighted and I went on with my practices and I, this was now in March of 1974 and in April, I wrote the master and asked if I could please come to India and spend time with him at Sawan Ashram. And he wrote back to me and said, June is a very hot month. You should wait until September. But of course, he was to leave in August. Well, I was in San Francisco at the time when the master left the body, and I was devastated. I felt I was just an orphan. I had only just begun on the path. And these were very difficult times. The satsang was torn apart with controversy. And I didn't know enough to be able to go in any direction, but I knew that if God had brought me to the master, then God would have to take me the next step. And I continued on with my meditations and tried to stay in the background of all this controversy that went on. There are many stories that I won't tell it because of the time. And at some point, uh, I was just praying to Master, please guide me, please guide me. And I was attending the satsang at the Lone Mountain College. And this was now in about 1976, several years had gone by. And one day, there was a call for seva. And, the, um, and I raised my hand. They needed a, a car and a driver. I volunteered. 
And one of the people then also volunteered that I had never met before. It was um, a woman whose name was Bernadine Chard. And Bernadine um, got me aside at one point and she said, I have something to tell you that I've been seeing inside Sant Kirpal Singh and also Sant Thakar Singh. And Sant Thakar Singh is um, to be the successor. And I thought, perhaps this is something I should pay attention to. The master works in very mysterious ways. I still tried to maintain a healthy skepticism, but I was very much intrigued. And she told me that the master had given her inside some people to contact and also one car. And my car was that car. <laughs> and this car was to have a significant role in the mission in the early days and to my good fortune I was able to be the driver. And during that um, period then, between then and the time when Sant uh, Thakar Singh first came to the um, uh, nor uh, the Americas uh, in 1977 in August um, I continued to go both to the Sant Kirpal Singh Satsang and also to the Sant Thakar Singh Satsang and also begin to do some seva over there and then finally in 1977 he came in August to Rosarita Beach and this was a very wonderful experience we spent about 10 days together there but there was one experience that very much um, cinched the knot for me um, and there was one evening that we were um, and I had thought very often about the statement that Master also just mentioned that Sant Kirpal Singh used to say if your friend comes um, in a one kind of coat one day and in another another day won't you recognize him and I thought there must be something to this although I didn't understand what it was so in this one day we were in Rosarita Beach and there was a little Catholic church made out of cinder blocks. It was under construction and we were using it for the satsang hall and there was no electricity there. It was illuminated only by candles that we are for the night satsang. There was about 50 candles, perhaps 70 candles. It was a very beautiful, sweet atmosphere. And at that particular time I was um, experiencing something with the master that whenever he would put us into meditation, he would take me out and I would go out and then um, within about one minute or 30 seconds before he was to bring us out of meditation, I would come out of meditation and I would look at him and then he would look up and say, you may come out of meditation now. And I got the idea that he was in control. He was bringing me up, bringing me down. And I was enjoying that. And on this particular event, this evening, when the candlelight, it was a very sweet atmosphere and the master um, was on the dais. He put us into meditation after satsang. And at one point I opened my eyes and I thought, now he will say, please come out of meditation. And I looked at the dais and there was no master. There was no one there and I looked around the hall and I could see no master. And I thought this was very strange because it felt like the master was there. And then I noticed up above the dais there was a small, like, uh, like a crystal, like cut crystal, like shining in the light, like one of these round crystals with many facets that catches the light. And I thought, that's odd that I didn't notice that before during the whole satsang. And it was very beautiful. And as I watched it, it began to, to glow and become brighter and brighter until it became a very large star, like the star of Bethlehem, like the cross with the ray coming down from the bottom. And in that ray that was coming down out of that, that star, uh, a very transparent silhouette of the master began to appear. And you could see through it, I could see the wall behind him, through that silhouette, and just very vaguely make out the fix fe features, and then that very bright star was in the forehead. And out of that forehead then came the face of Sant Kirpal Singh Ji Maharaj, the very same face with the very same expression that had appeared to me at the time I was initiated. And with the very same rose-colored light in his eyes, he looked at me and the light came out of his eyes and came into me and said, I will never leave you. So. Then that light coalesced and the master's form became more and more opaque until it was solid and that light receded into his forehead and he opened his eyes and said, you may come out of meditation now.
Separate. 